Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Commissioner Michael Copps, for that very generous introduction. Michael Copps and I have a mutual admiration society. He is a colossus in the communications universe. He is a stalwart champion of the public interest. Commissioner Copps upholds the values that the Communications Act directs the FCC to fulfill on behalf of the American people. Diversity, localism, universal service, competition, and innovation. He is a one-man public policy powerhouse for the public media. And when his term at the FCC concludes at the end of this year, Michael Copps will leave an enduring legacy of unmatched achievement, but he will still be a cops on the beat uh, for uh, the public interest for the rest of his life. Thank you, Josh Silver, for your incredible leadership and far-reaching vision. Congratulations and thank you to Craig Aaron for your new role in leading Free Press. I know you will continue to be a phenomenal force for building the movement for better media. And you do have the, the giants of the communications uh, policy-making establishment down in Washington here with you tonight. Mike Doyle, the great congressman, uh, along with Donna Edwards, Nancy Pelosi was here yesterday. All the biggest fans of net neutrality, keeping communications networks open. So it is so great to be a part of this amazing event. There are more media mavens per square inch here tonight than anywhere else in the United States of America ever. You can actually follow around the conference the same people you normally follow on Twitter. They're all right here. It is incredible. We have the greatest assemblage of writers, artists, community organizers, online activists, independent journalists, and media makers ever assembled all of you here this evening. You tweet, you text, post, Skype, blog, and Facebook to make your voices heard every single day. And since they stopped that 75-year-old lady from digging in Tbilisi last week, your messages will get through even if they're in Armenia, Azerbaijan, or Georgia. The internet is back up. So now, more than ever, it is so vital that your messages do get through to the policymakers on Capitol Hill. And why? Do Republicans in Congress need to hear from you today? Well, on Wednesday, this week, they brought to the House floor a bill to repeal the Environmental Protection Agency's authority to regulate greenhouse gases. Then yesterday, they passed a resolution to repeal the FCC's ability to ensure the openness of the Internet. So as time ticked down on Friday afternoon, the Republicans in Congress were trying to shut down the Internet and the federal government simultaneously. They didn't shut down the government, and we're about to make sure that they don't shut down the Internet either. We are going to organize, mobilize, and get energized to fend off these assaults. That's because GOP used to stand for Grand Old Party. Now it stands for Gang of Polluters. Now it stands for Greed Over Principle. Now it stands for the Gas and Oil Party. Republicans, Republicans attack the authority of both the EPA and the FCC, which are designed to make both the polluters and the broadband barons the big winners at the expense of our environment, our health, our economy, and the American consumers. In other words, the Republicans are trying to pass legislation to destroy the World Wide Web, and they're also passing legislation to help destroy the whole wide world. <laughs> they're, they're taking aim at Google Earth and setting their sights on Mother Earth. They are trying to mess with the blogosphere and pollute the atmosphere at the same time. They want to clog up the internet, smog up the air with, from smokestacks belching massive amounts of dangerous global warming pollution, preserving the open internet and protecting our environment and human health should be our priority. Instead, these two evil legislative twins would pull us in opposite direction. But remember, 
Congress is a stimulus response institution, and there's nothing more stimulating to a member of Congress than a, Congress than a deluge of millions of digital feedback, you know, <laughs> from the net roots of the United States of America. You have the power to put congressmen on notice that their votes can have consequences for their job security. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Congress cares when you click. In the net neutrality battle, when the FCC put forward its open internet order, I wasn't happy. I wanted it to go further. Michael Copps wanted it to go further. I wanted reclassification under Title II. But regardless of how we viewed the FCC's order, we can all agree that the internet needs to be open a level playing field for anyone that can't be controlled by a central authority, whether it is a corporation or a country's totalitarian regime. We are constantly reminded how essential an open internet ecosystem is to free expression and democracy. In the Middle East, from Tunisia to Iran, Egypt and Bahrain, Saudi Arabia and Libya, Young people are striving to throw off the shackles of corrupt, repressive regimes. The echoes of Tahir Square and Pearl Square in Bahrain stretch back through world history to places like the Lexington Green, which is in my congressional district and only a few miles from here. On Lexington Green in 1775, American colonists took up arms and began the struggle to free themselves from the tyranny of Great Britain. A half a mile from here, there was a Tea Party, then too. But it was the Tea Party of Sam Adams. Today's Tea Parties are more like the Tea Party of Alice in Wonderland with more Mad Hatters than you can count. The, the internet is a modern day musket in the uprisings surging through the Middle East. These modern day patriots are using digital tools in order to ensure that freedom is a fundamental right of every human being. Social media is the enabler, but these are not Facebook revolutions. The movement sweeping across the Middle East and the Midwest in our own country are about people and by people using the latest tools and leveraging the power of the network. The ubiquity of mobile phones, which are really PCs in the pocket of the protesters are the means of transmitting the scenes that grab the world's attention. None of the wizardry of wireless devices, applications, and services would have happened without the Telecommunications Act of 1996, which I was proud to be the author of. But today, we have to remain vigilant to ensure that we don't permit the return of the type of consolidation that would undercut our leading position in the world. AT&T and T-Mobile recently announced their plan to merge, a merger that would reduce the number of major national wireless fir firms from four down to three. In the early 1990s, American ingenuity and innovation were held back by a sluggish analog cellular duopoly. In every market across the nation, we had two cellular providers. They were analog and charged 50 cents a minute. Working for several years, I was able to move through a bill which moved over 200 megahertz of spectrum that created the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth licenses. They went digital. The price dropped to under, 50, under 10 cents a minute. We moved from black rotary dial phones to Blackberries, and we had a revolution going on in the hands of every person and every street in our country. And what does, the, what, does the, what does the duopoly say today? Don't regulate. We have plenty of competition. Well, I don't need to know what is going to go on if we go from five to four to three to two. We go back to 20 years ago, which is where we all started when we were trying to get more companies, more spectrum, more capacity out there so that people could communicate. So this is our big challenge, that we don't go into a way back machine. We're doing the same thing on the debate on public radio, on public television. They believe it is a grievous threat to our republic if NPR and public television exist. 
Last time it happened, five years ago, I brought in the greatest threat to them, Clifford the Big Red Dog, for a, pre for a press conference. And we were able to scare them off. But the Tea Party has come back again. You know, Mark Twain used to say that history doesn't repeat itself, but it does tend to rhyme. So I told you in, I told you in Memphis four years ago, they were coming back again for, this, uh, for these uh, institutions. And so what we have to do, using WGBH and WBUR here in Boston and all of those public stations across the country, that we are going to beat back the Republican efforts to kill CPB and NPR. And it starts here in Boston. And just as we are pushing the Republican Party to keep its hands off of Arthur and his friends, we are going to make sure that no one touches public access television, and low power radio. In this area, we have a high powered message. Keep your hands off. We are going to make sure that the children's television rules stay on the books and stay strong so that the children of our country receive the highest quality programming. And we're going to make sure uh, that we give the same kind of access to the blind and the deaf and the deaf and blind. Uh, and I was able to pass legislation signed by the President uh, in October in the White House that is going to create now not wheelchair accessibility, but a guaranteed on-ramp to the Internet for every deaf and blind person in our country so that they can be part of our revolution, so they have full access to all of this information. We have to move from Braille to broadcast, from broadband to the BlackBerry. That is our responsibility so that we have all of those citizens as well who are part of this revolution. Our challenge is to shape the media for the public and not the publicly traded company. To build a mass movement for better media to inform and to enlighten now and into the future. It will be a great challenge. In Washington, there are legions of lobbyists for every congressman. There are communications colossi who want to warp the World Wide Web into their image. Only you stand between the web as we know it and the web as they want it to be. The other side is pouring hundreds of millions of dollars into the battle, especially now that they have been given a free hand by a majority of the Supreme Court. Well, they may have Citizens United, but we have netizens united, and we are going to win this fight. The bloggers of America must unite. We have nothing to lose but our net neutrality if we do not fight. The voices of American people must be heard. We have made sure that testifying before, be, uh, next to the CEOs at a congressional hearing will have someone that you choose to testify before these congressional hearings, so your voices are heard as well. You must select the witnesses to be heard at these hearings, because on every single issue that will be debated, there is one thing that separates you from your opponents. You are right, and they are wrong, ladies and gentlemen. And why is this fight worth fighting? Well, in the words of Robert F. Kennedy, whose speech almost a half a century ago electrified a nation. He said, too much and for too long we seem to have surrendered personal excellence and community values in the mere accumulation of material things. Our gross domestic product now is over $800 billion a year. But the gross domestic product counts air pollution and cigarette advertising and ambulances to clear our highways of carnage. It counts special locks for our doors and the jails for the people who break them. It counts the destruction of the redwood and the loss of our natural wonder in chaotic sprawl. It counts the television programs which glorify violence in order to sell toys to our children. Yet the gross national product does not allow for the health of our children, the quality of their education, or the joy of their play. It measures neither the wit nor our courage, neither our wisdom nor our learning, neither our compassion nor our devotion to our country. It measures everything, in short, except that which makes life worthwhile. And it can tell us everything about America, except why we are proud.
to be Americans. A broadcast license, a website can animate and it can teach. Communications can enable and ennoble or it can degrade and debase. That is why this conference is so important. It's sparking a wave of grassroots activism across the planet, a wave of digital democracy, a wave of energy sweeping across cyberspace. You, you are the energy behind this wave. I thank you bloggers for sending the message loud and clear, hands off the internet. And we are going to tell them, hands off of Medicare, hands off of Medicaid, hands off of Planned Parenthood, hands off of Social Security, hands off of the EPA, hands off of the wind and solar revolution, hands off of the internet. This is the time, this is the place, you are the people, I will be your partner in this fight in order to reclaim America for the people across this country. Thank you all, all, for everything you do for this cause.